It says we're live. There we go. Hey folks, this is Raymaker from DC Raymaker, and I've got Chip from Wahoo Fitness here. He's a founder of Wahoo Fitness. Uh, we're here live at Eurobike outside the DCR RV, and we're gonna go ahead and do a bit of a DCR uh, Q&A live session. I'll have some initial questions, and then we'll go ahead and take your questions down below in the comment section. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hit tweet here, so folks outside go and see this message and see that we're we're live here at the RV. And we'll get started here in a second. Uh, so make sure that's gone out and double check and make sure it's actually streaming on Facebook. Uh, it does show it down here in the, the corner. I can see people are, are connecting now, which is awesome. So we're, we're good to go. Um, so as I mentioned here, we're at Eurobike, which is in uh, Germany, just on the kind of the border of Germany and Switzerland. It's an annual event uh, for the bike industry. It's massive. It's these huge halls just right over here. Uh, there's, I think, eight or nine big um, airplane halls, uh, basically they're for the Zeppelins, which is kind of those uh, big airships, and they've been converted into conference halls. Uh, it's the biggest sort of bike show in the world uh, for the industry. There's this one, there's the uh, Taiwan Bike Show, I believe, and uh, Interbike coming up in a couple of weeks. And this is where a lot of products are announced. So uh, Wahoo Fitness announced their Wahoo Kicker this morning, so we'll talk briefly about that at some point. And then I uh, will talk about some of the other stuff out there. And then we'll as well just talk about kind of the general, uh, some kind of general questions around, you know, running a business in the sports technology world and some of the challenges from, from start to beginning. Um, and, and we'll go from there. Uh, so this is Wahoo's based out of Atlanta. Um, and I think that's kind of an interesting way to start talking a little bit about, you know, where Wahoo Fitness came from. Because it wasn't um, initially a technology company, but rather more in the, before like the Wahoo Fitness part, it was something else. Yeah, yeah, I'll give a little quick history. So I, um, I've been an entrepreneur for many years, and, um, and Wahoo Fitness came about uh, while I was running another business, which I still have, called Wahoo Boat Docks. Um, and, and so uh, along, the, along the years of running Wahoo Boat Docks, I, uh, I, I was getting older and getting heavier. And my, uh, my, wife, my wife talked me into doing a duathlon. Um, so I, I go to the du duathlon. I, I was I was a guy that grew up not doing much other than sailing, windsurfing. Uh, I was not into running, cycling, any of those things. And uh, so so she convinced me to do a duathlon with a bunch of couple friends, and um, and I did not finish that duathlon. I ran 5K without stopping, and then I ran a I I, I did a 20 uh, mile bike, and then I got off the bike and sat down and said, okay, this something's got to change. Um, and and that really was a turning point for me. I. Uh, I started doing a few boot camps. Uh, during the boot camps, I met a girl that had just finished an Ironman. Who said I should do a triathlon, so then I did a triathlon. Um, and through this, I'm a total. Um, have always been a total tech nerd and gadget head and data guy, and um, and pretty competitive. So I bought a nice bike, bought a power meter, and was immediately just absolutely frustrated with the state of technology. Um, I had a power tap little yellow computer that they called it at the time and it didn't have anything wireless and then I had a Garmin which is one of the earlier Garmins and and they didn't talk it to each other so there was GPS and then there was power data and I was actually finding myself writing Excel macros in order to see what how to make these things work and uh, so that that led me to you know kind of come up with this you know I've got I can make this better um, and so I started with this Ant Key. Wahoo Fitness was born really with me trying to get all this data on my bike into my iPhone. Uh, it's right about the same time iPhones came out. And uh, so I, I started looking into it, and um, lo and behold, no one had tackled that problem. Um, I, I called guys at, at the Ant uh, with Ant and Dynastream and ended up going to the Ant Conference, uh, which I've been to like six years now. Yeah. And, uh, and, and yeah, it was funny. There were actually four companies there that were all making Ant Plus dongles at the time for the iPhone. And, um, and being an entrepreneur, that made me think, you know, well, there's an opportunity here. Yep. Yeah, it didn't really scare me away. And, um, and, yeah, none of those guys actually ever made it anywhere, I don't think. But, um, so, yeah, we, I built this Ant key, which allowed us to get heart rate data, power meter data, everything into an iPhone. And we wrote our own app. Um, but I think where we really had success is we opened up um, an SDK for anyone to use it. And at the time, people were running with their iPhones a lot, so we, um, we partnered with RunKeeper, MapMyRun. Um, there was no such thing as Strava at the time. And, um, and those guys were our kind of go-to-market. Let's get started um, and, uh, and kind of built from there. We then started making sensors. Uh, 
speed and cadence sensors and you know the, the kicker came about in that same in that same process I um, early on bought a compu trainer because I was trying to figure the, the exact problem I was trying to solve I was doing triathlon and I wanted to ride the course over and over and over but it was like an hour and and so I thought, you know, there's got to be a way to do this with a trainer. And um, and I looked online, CompuTrainer existed, um, but it really was impossible to do that. I bought like four ninety nine dollar pieces of software to do the course creator, and I kind of sort of did it. But I, that was the point where I was like, there's a better way. And um, so that and that was years before we actually made the kicker. But that was the point where I knew I had to make a kicker. And I believe we've talked a little in the past about kind of a funny story with you and the compu trainer and the head unit and basically wanting to wanting to have something that made it all wi-fi and yeah the well the, the, I, I wasn't in love with the compu trainer i mean it had its quirks it was wheel on um but but yeah i i really 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 just wanted to get the data and be able to control it which you know kind of is what a lot of companies in the industry do today and uh and they just they would not talk to me at they said, no, you can't, you know, an iPhone doesn't have enough processing power to control something as precise as a copy trainer. And, and I mean, I really tried hard <laughs> to talk them into letting me, I was going to make a little dongle that plugged in, I take the plug from their head unit and plug in a lot. almost as like a hobby sort of. Yeah, it's a hobby. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and, I, and I kind of had picked up some skills with got engineers and we had done the dong I was like I know I can make this work and they just said no and so uh yeah they ultimately led to the kicker because <laughs> had I done that I probably would still be using a compu trainer with a wahoo and a small dongle instead a small dongle, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty so speaking of dongles one of the things that was funny posted on the Swift it was last night or whatever it was and how you know there's a lot of people now that still have ant accessories in the past but um, don't necessarily have uh, a way to get those onto an iOS device. And the dongle used to resolve. Um, do you see a future some way to kind of get between Ant and smartphone type of scenarios? You know, it's a tough one. We've we've um, probably is is real There's no growth in it, uh, and you can still use our dongle. going to the effort of that product because everything we've made for the last two years that's really cool industry what so, and and I, I heard you know, we had a ant of Bluetooth sure. product you sold and only it's probably their own solution best bet. Cool. So my first question is so far from the list here so I've got them on this laptop and it's Someone in the back in the yard. So one person asked, with the new kicker, uh, do you still plan to support upgrades? To the existing kicker, the original kicker, in terms of software updates. Yeah. You know, the main change for internal. Um, but yeah, we we no no chance we won't keep those in lockstep as far as functionality. Okay. Cool. Let's see what do we got next. See in general. So obviously, uh, we release a. Sorry, if you're hearing in the background, that is actually one. <laughs> landing above us here, uh, big Zeppelin. Um, it literally, we're like 200 meters from the landing. It comes in right above the RV here, probably just a view, 
and lands right there. So if you're hearing that craziness, uh, that is that there. Sorry about that as well. Um, so where do you see trainers in terms of uh, going off? shake and rattle and things like that um, down the road as well as being very, very silent with the video. Um, do you see that going that entertainment direction or? You know, I think it's, there's, it's interesting. It's truly a segment now, a growing segment of our training. And, and I think there's room for the kind of the entertainment side. I think that's growing fast. I think you have to be careful that, um, you know, how many serious cyclists want the entertainment. I think you start to narrow that market down a bit. Um, you, know, I, you know, we definitely want to support all of those aspects of it, but I think, uh, you know, that authenticity of power and feel is really critical. Um, it's interesting to see it come from, you know, just the kicker to, or compu trainer and kicker to, you know, there's a whole suite of products out there now. So we've got to keep on our toes. We've got to make sure we keep our, um, you know, keep innovating and, and keeping the product relevant. Yep. From from your perspective, you know, for people that are looking between the, the, the kicker snap, for example, and um, the higher end kicker, where do you see? Obviously, there's kind of a bit of a gap there in price, about twice the price. Do you see an opportunity for something in the middle ground there? So, example, we've seen uh, tax with the flow trainer kind of sitting at 900 bucks. Um, do you see an opportunity for that middle ground, or do you think you'll just see the prices of those two ends sort of shrink in between a bit? You know, honestly, they'll probably come together. Um, there, there may be an opportunity. I mean, our um, yeah, honestly, our margins aren't that fantastic. I wish we made a ton of money and we could just, you know, bring the kicker down. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think there'd be too many compromises. Um, you know, it's something we're constantly looking at. Um, you know, and and there'll definitely be new products from us in the future, um, but probably in other, you know, expanding categories. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see. I. It's hard for me to picture a you know a kicker in between what we have mm -hmm. in the snap, um, or, or bringing the cost of the kicker down so yep. much from where it is. Just it would be there would be too many compromises. Okay, so looking at kind of the, the trainer market, you you see in the U.S. Um, people are saying it's great audio quality and video quality right now. So we'll hope that another <laughs> nice. another blimp doesn't fly by or anything else. Um, you know, in the U.S., I would say that it's definitely a very strong. Position. Um, and I think as you look to Europe, you see some of the companies like Tax and Elite in a bit of a stronger position in terms of uh, that base there. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that you've got this kind of dynamic there? Well, it's, you know, we were born in Atlanta, Georgia, and, uh, you know, didn't really consider Europe, you know, the first few years. The first, the first step was we were shipping things overseas, um, you know, straight from FedEx or UPS, which was really, uh, really tough. Um, we opened an office in, uh, or a warehouse in Rotterdam, and that helped. But still, we didn't have the presence. You know, we've got a whole marketing department in, in, in the U.S., and we really didn't have anything here. Um, you know, the, the, a lot changed for us when we, when we signed up with Team Sky. So mm -hmm. that brought, you know, awareness of who Wahoo is to, to Europe. Um, we've recently, just in the last few months, opened an office in London. And we've got a few folks over here, so we're trying to make inroads and kind of, uh, you know, build our presence to the yep. Europeans. How has the Team Sky partnership worked out in terms of, is that something that, are you getting technical feedback from them, or is it more marketing, or kind of where is that, that sit in the grand scheme of things? Um, you know, there's really two relationships there. There's a relationship on the technical side and on the business side, and they're, and they're quite different, and I kind of <laughs> laugh about it because I'm, uh, you know, I'm the CEO, but I'm also the technical guy. Yep. Um, I'm still the chief engineer, and so I work really close with um, with Tim Carrison and all the, 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 the riders, and I, I spend a lot of time with them, and um, yeah, we get a lot of feedback. Now, their use case and typical people's use case isn't exactly the same. The weight, they hate the weight, right? So we don't want to compromise the weight. They, they, so they use them in two use cases. One is at home and they love what we have. The other is at races. And so, you know, one of their edicts is at the end of every stage, if they're near the front, they're going to do a cool down. And that's something people didn't used to do. So that means they have to carry a kicker, sometimes a mile from the van to the podium. And, uh, and so we built a podium kicker just for Team Sky. It's got an aluminum flywheel, aluminum frame. It weighs like 18 pounds, <laughs> and they can carry that sucker around. Um, but it's not something that we would really want to sell because it doesn't help the kicker in any way. And, sure. and the flywheel actually has a little less inertia. Right. But it's a trade-off they're willing to make, and it's a cool down. They basically want to you know spin their legs out for 15 minutes after you know huh. a six-hour ride or five-hour yeah, ride. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That's, it's funny. I'm sure there's lots of like kind of those random... Uh, insider stories in terms of the, the pro teams and stuff. 
Do you have any sort of hilarious moments from working with the pro teams that, uh, you know, on the Wahoo side that you're like, that sticks out in your brain as a story you tell people at the bar at night? You know, it, probably my favorite one was I went to the training camp in Mallorca. I've been there um, a, a few years in a row now. And I showed up last year and and six or eight of the riders were all sitting around. And, um, and I've gotten to know Ian Boswell pretty well. And he said, Chip, we're going to ride go-karts. You want to come? And it's like, okay. So, uh, so myself and JP from my office and eight Team Sky Riders went and raced some hardcore high-speed go-karts for a couple of hours, and I didn't lose. So I can say I beat some Team Sky Riders in a race. Uh, That's awesome. They are, they are competitive in all aspects, I can tell you that. It was, uh, it was wild. So Mark, uh, Mark Liver's Edge, who I'm sure you know the name, he's a Golden Cheetah, one of the guys behind the Golden Cheetah software. He's yeah. asked, asked a question here. Um, have you ever considered looking into aero, bike fit, or positioning tech? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> was that a, a no no or was that like a back through history like I'm not uh, yeah not opposed in any way and I and yeah. I have I mean I've had a lot of discussions with guys um and their names escaping me about some of the tech that's out there and um and would love to support it you know one of the things we're trying to do with the element is differentiate ourselves um from the big players out there by hitting some of the use cases that wouldn't be as mainstream and that's one I would love to tackle you know get get data in real time on a head unit that would help you like you know at a, at a track to get um to get arrow feedback yep. um i could see that as being really useful okay uh let's see Dwayne hastings uh ask what do you think is the next evolution in cycling in general do you think it's new metrics or new training styles no oh, good question um e-bikes <laughs> That's a, uh, sitting here at Eurobike, it is uh, it is huge. Um, electric motors are showing up everywhere. That's you know, there's probably a lot of people that don't like that at yep. all. But um, you know, it's I, I grew up doing some motocross, and to see mountain bikes here that have 30 or 40 horsepower motors on them that probably weigh 50 pounds is kind of stunning. But uh, yeah, it's um, I'm I'm not sure as far as training styles or anything, mm -hmm. but um, but e-bikes are definitely a surprise that uh, that I think the U.S. is yet to see. Europe's seeing it more, but um, yeah, I, I think you'll see motors on bikes on group rides, you know, in the next really? few years to to allow folks to kind of. Uh, essentially handicap and keep up with the group? Uh, yeah, or? that's, I mean, I see that. I ride a lot with guy, you know, with people of varying skills, and, and it's, you know, there's people that really want to hang on, and there's people that want to go hard, and I think, yeah, there, you know, there's room for product that would kind of be a handicap. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a 40 horsepower uh, motor, but, you know, maybe it's 50 watts mm -hmm. that you could turn on that you wouldn't hide, but, um, but I, I think it could be, it could be a pretty cool. Just enough to bridge that gap there. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Keep the question. I'm going to rhythm now stabilizing a bit as uh, founder what would you advise for an engineer looking to get started on their own um, what was the hardest part of getting going yeah it's interesting I've been an entrepreneur for many years um, just sticking with it um, there's two nuggets that I've learned one is that um, you know I enter me all the time and the notion that if someone's already done it it's too late if someone's already done it, it you know, that, that's valid that it's a good idea. Don't you know, come up with an idea and you go on Google and you say, oh, there's three other people. It, well, in there for a while, it may still be a good idea. So I'd say stick with it. But for the most part, uh, just give up. Uh, just disappeared here. I'll pull back up again. Um, uh, he said, Dave. Uh, harder, I believe it is. Asked, as a long time walker, um, there's multiple problems with the Reflect Plus. What do you say to convince me to buy the element? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we have put um, we have put our heart and souls into the element. Uh, when we did the Reflect, it was um, it was myself and Murray. Uh, we, and we really weren't a company that was ready for that, um, and so I, I think at the when we launched it, it was ready. It was great. But I think through iOS updates, through our updates, through complications of trying to do the ant bridge, um, you know, we created a use case that was really, really tough to fulfill. And, um, and, and yeah, it's been a tough product to support. Um, 
the element we have um, we've put our heart and souls into it. We have a nine man team on the element and have for about a year, and they're still going strong. I mean, we've released another firmware update today. Um, I'm I'm super pleased with it, and I, it's I mean I it, it's nice. I recommend it to everybody. Like I'm the I'm the founder, but you know I'm I'm honest with myself too. Um, it's it's turned out really well. Um, I'm getting tons of feedback from people that they like it a lot. Um, group rides we're getting this network effect where you know if a couple people on a group ride have an element usually at the end of the ride a couple other people want to buy one which has been fantastic so um yeah i it's worth it. the element is not a reflect plus i guess would be my <laughs> <laughs> okay um what do you see or you mentioned actually nine people on the reflect or on the uh, element team how many folks do you have total at wahoo we are up to um i think 89 at last count okay um, and majority of them are atlanta correct that's correct. Yeah, we have a the biggest team is in Atlanta. We have, um, but we we have kind of a, a really loose policy. If if we find a good person, it doesn't matter where they are. So we have um, we've got a, a bunch of developers in Australia. We've got a um, math genius, Dr. Mark, in Amsterdam. Um, uh, we've got one Kiwi who we nobody can understand. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've we're spread all over the place. Cool. Uh, let's see. Working our way down the list here. Uh, we talked about future uh, fitness tech, so that's that's good. Um, Craig Forrest says, hi, Chip. Your Atlanta cycling buddies at BWA Cycling are cheering for you and watching success <laughs> at, at Eurobike. Um, let's see, working our way down further here. Uh, so, yeah, we've still got, uh, I think we're, we've solved most of the audio issues, so I think we're we're relatively good there. Um, keep on keep on cruising through the rows and keep on definitely dropping in the questions as you as you go forward as we go down the list here uh so zipping back over again you obviously attended uh or attending eurobike and uh, you've had interbike in the past ant plus symposium and, and other shows what's your favorite sports uh tech type show out there to go to eurobike yeah it's it's stressful from a company perspective but it's really cool to walk around um it's very unique uh, again you're e-bikes you see things that you just don't see in the states um and, and it's amazing that the shows are so different you, you, you know i don't see uh, yeah i want to be careful maybe they are here but you don't see trek here you don't see you know you see a bunch of brands that aren't in the states and um and you see a lot of cool products that are um, very unique i mean i i there's a wooden laminated frame right next to us that, it, that like it's a beautiful bike it's all wood so there's lots of cool stuff stuff yeah the new di2 stuff but but i haven't had any chance to no, no it's nice this year it's all it's it's last year it's kind of like a little thing up in the parking lot here but now this year it's the entire back side of the convention and it's all the entire week it's it's great so uh definitely have a chance to check that out um so you know when i visited you guys uh back a um a couple years ago in your headquarters you showed me then what became the kicker desk right and at that time or the I'm not sure what the exact name, but I'm calling it the kicker desk. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at the time, that was sort of like Chip's secret project behind the scenes at out of the closet. Like, you literally pulled it out of the storage closet, <laughs> right. like Christmas lights from the year before sort of thing. Um, and at the time, uh, you know, Mike and others were like, ah, you, you keep doing that, Chip. You'll see how that works out. Um, and, you know, eventually you got to the point where it's a sellable product. What other of those things along the way have been finally, like, gone into the closet and are there permanently um that are kind of like chip <laughs> chip things that you wanted to make but either there is simply no market for it or oh i've got one that someday i will make maybe <laughs> it's when i retire um and 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 i'd love feedback from the if there's a lot of people <laughs> listening so i want to make a little um basically a paddle boat for my tri bike so i can train on the water so i want to put my bike on um you know a little catamaran and as i pedal i'm going to run a little propeller and cruise around the lake on my bike while I'm training. So, it, you know, you use your power meter to get, but I, you know, Atlanta is not a safe place to ride. You can ride in the morning um, before the sun comes up, but, um, and that's what I do with the BWH cycling guys that are apparently watching yeah. us. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it would be an awesome place. I, I grew up on the water and love the water. So, and, and yeah, I don't think that one's going to make it out of the closet, <laughs> but maybe someday. Yeah, you'd probably port that back into your existing the company on the on the dock side yeah, more than anything yeah, that's else. Yeah, Wahoo Dock slash Fitness yeah. product. <laughs> um, uh, Derek asks, how long for the? Uh, let's see, is the kicker the existing original kicker going to stay in the market? Are you still making that at this point, or is that basically sunsetted? We have we have, we are sunsetting it. Um, there are some left, so we'll be you know you'll probably be able to get a deal on them, but there's not a lot left. So um, you know over the next few months. 
they should be they should be pretty much gone. Okay. Um, so you're only making, I believe, an 11 speed for the, the new kicker. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, is that just simply there's no market demand anymore for 10 speed like you did in the past? or? Well, we just kind of felt like it was um, the 11 speed costs a little more than the 10 speed. It's uh, most people we think are, you know, it's now that it's down into the 105s and the lower the lower end products that it's, you know, it's the right move. Um, you can probably swap it out for free. Somebody that wants it, 11, you know, people are using more 11 speed now than 10 speed. Um, so it, and having two SKUs in four warehouses, you know, we would end up adding a lot of money in inventory. So um, it just seemed like you know we want to put the we want to put the cassette in there. Um, I think that's the right thing to do, but it just it, we can't really justify two different SKUs for that purpose. Okay. So keep the questions flown in, folks. So we got another one here from. Uh, let's see, Jeff uh, is asking, I think your experience with Rider Desires, bike computers and mobile apps could make you leader in the on-bike camera market. Any chance cameras are on the roadmap? You know, I, I can't say they're on the roadmap, but we definitely are looking at them. Um, you know, we're, and we're looking at other categories that, um, that make sense for us, where we can take technology and, and cycling and, and merge those together. And cameras is an interesting one. Um, it's also crowded. There's, you know, we would have to come up with a reason that we, can, you know, something we can do unique to make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Are you guys still planning to do the GoPro um, connectivity at some point this fall? I think, or yeah, we that one's been tough. They um, their implementation is a little tricky, and so it slowed us down. They um, they made, I don't want to get too technical, but they made a central. You can only have one central connection, and so you basically, I'm afraid of the Reflect Plus scenario where the GoPro connects to the phone, which connects to the element, mm -hmm. and we're left in a situation where that may be the only way we can do it, and, um, and that scares me. Having done it before, um, I want to have a direct connection between the two, and, and I think we can, but we're, we're still working through it. Okay. What do you see as sort of on the horizon as the, the coolest potential updates to the element, either software or hardware down the road, for example? I, I might get in trouble for this, but I can't get in trouble because it's already out. But we released um, a firmware update today that has best bike split, mm -hmm. and it is awesome. Um, and if anyone like does races and really has a goal and knows their power and trains with power, I, you know, I'd recommend it to everybody that does it. It, it basically, um, I don't want to give an advertisement for best mm -hmm. bike split, but um, without the element, it was a little hard to implement. With mm -hmm. the element, it's, it's a really cool interface. So you basically can focus on your target plan. It takes you, you know, exactly what you should do in every segment of the race. When you're going up a hill, you should put out a little more power because there's less wind resistance. When you're going downhill, you want to put out a little less power. It takes all that into account. You can even put in the wind speed and wind direction on race morning, and it adjusts everything. So it's pretty <laughs> That's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. It's because, it, yeah, for those folks not familiar with Best Bikes, but it's become like this thing that I think especially tries athletes are really focused on because it's it isn't it's such an individual sport at least long course triathlon anyways um and so being able to kind of that predictive element and being say here is what your ironman split should be you know and some people are getting down to like the second on these and it's crazy accurate what it comes out of yeah well ryan is a really smart guy i don't know if he, he yep. um when i first met him he what he the way he started was he was using his models to predict ironman finish times yep. and he was hitting them within like five or you know maybe 30 and uh, and and he got a lot of people's attention because he would not only say, you know, this is what when you'll finish. He would say, if you did this, you would have finished in this amount of time. And that's yeah. when people like like stand up and take yeah. notice. Yeah, no, it's it's really cool stuff. I'm looking for all to get a shot then and see how it how it works on on the element. Um, let's see. I think I've backed out at least ten or fifteen minutes of the questions. I'm just making sure I'm not missing any down below. Uh, keep on going up. We talked about kicker supplies. Um, uh, Mark asks, I love my kicker. One thing I note is that my kicker V1 power numbers are always 20 to 25 watts higher than the stage's power meter. I have latest firmware and roll spin down regularly. What is up? So we have a calibration kit. If that really is happening to you and it's consistent, um, that's probably what you need to do is calibrate it. Um, and the calibration kit, I think we've got some kind of return options and stuff where you can buy it, send it back, we give you your money back. But it's probably that strain gauge uh, needs calibrating. Okay. Uh, any distribution plans? This is from Dave Zhu. Uh, any distribution plans in Latin America? Um, yes. Yes, we've, we've signed up a few guys. Um, we're, we're aggressively trying to get good dealers and good distributors in Latin America. Okay. Uh, Richard asks, as more mountain bike uh, riders adopt indoor trainings or training, any plans to adopt uh, more 
REST axle standards? Uh, I'm just assuming additional axle standards. Yeah, we, we have got um, a couple more kits on the way. So there's um, there are several that we've that have kind of been brought to our attention, specialized short chain stay, which which I think they've discontinued, but it's been one that's been a challenge for people. Um, there's, there's pretty much a way with the adapter kit we have or the adapter kit, adapter kit we have with a longer um, quick release to, to accomplish just about everything. And our goal is to make it compatible with any bike. Uh, and there's not really a physical constraint to being able to do that. It's just time. And, and understanding that there, it's hard when the standards don't really exist yet. You know, to, to support one bike is tough, uh, but but they seem to be settling down. Okay. Um, for those wondering, the, the baby in the background is not mine. The girl is actually not here in the RV. <laughs> not sure how much audio you can, can randomly hear, uh, but that's... You know, I don't pay a lot of attention, but... Not, although I did this morning, um, you know, it's their that's their middle of the road train, right? Yeah, that's like a cheaper. Yeah, it's, it's it might affect people. The ten percent is the big one. You know, ten percent is is not high. I don't know what it does, but I imagine there's some bigger than that. We actually six months in We we work.
Okay. Just seeing if I can change the audio settings there, but I think we're kind of why the book took eight hours to upload today. Um, it's absolutely nuts. Where we could was so now you see something like that as. Will be more from technology in this screen. We I'm going to switch to a different audio. Uh, I'm just going to switch over to the actual camera. Um, so we'll see if that makes it any better. Just drop a note so we can see on the screen if that helps or if that made it worse. Uh, and we'll, we'll keep on going from there. Um, so, you know, you, you mentioned earlier on that you're definitely kind of a runner at, at heart there. Um, but we haven't really seen a lot of technology from Wahoo in the running side recently. We saw the, the ticker straps a couple years ago, I think now. Um, do you expect to go back to the running world eventually, or do you think you'll be focused more on the cycling world? Yeah, there's there's really a big push 
from us to get into the gym world and also the running world. And it's it's tough. I mean, if you look at runners, a lot of them run in shorts and running sneakers. You know, there's not a lot of technology. Um, and even the guys I run with tend to have really old garments, you know, and, and they're really, you know, the craziest thing is they've all figured out, you know, that you can pay Garmin $50 for a new battery and it's like, well, you can get a new watch too, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but yes, I, um, I, I definitely, you know, it, it's a dream of mine to have something that would, that would be like the element for runners. And I, and I think we'll get there someday. Number of um, folks have said it was working and then it's not working. So, uh, we're going to, we're just going to stick with this for now and, and see how the, that goes forward. Uh, so I think in that same question or same vein there, uh, someone asked a moment ago um, about swimming actually, given that you're kind of a triathlete as well. Um, what are your thoughts on tech for running and swimming, uh, both training and wearables? So do you have a, a preference for something that you use while you're, um, while you're running and swimming? You know, I, I've tried everything swimming, and uh, and I and I've got a product I can't give you all the details on, and I, and it probably will end up in the closet. But I've got an awesome swimming. Pro I'll just tell you. So I want to put a heads-up display on my goggles and watch TV while I swim because swimming is the most boring thing to do ever. But I, I'm sure it'll never see the light of day. So I'll go ahead and tell you about it. Um, so and I, yeah, I've actually prototyped it uh, to to be able to watch TV while I'm swimming would be awesome. Uh, um, that would be pretty crazy, and yeah. that's in a lap pool or indoor, uh, or a, um, like an indoor uh, continual swimmer that you've been. No, it, it, well, I haven't actually swam with it. Okay. I've just, I've, I, it's in my head how it works. Okay. It's doable. <laughs> it's figured out. Yeah, no, I haven't been swimming with it. No, I, I wish I would. Uh, if I had gotten that far, we'd probably be making it. Um, now, so I, I've, I would love to have headphones for swimming, and and I've tried them all, and I ultimately. You know, it, they just, nobody has that yet. Um, they, they're, they're painfully, you know, they either, your ears fill up with water, or there's the bone conduction ones, which everybody else in the pool here is louder than you, but it sounds like Mickey Mouse. Um, so, yeah, I haven't had much luck with tech swimming yet. Um, and, and, and haven't really done the watches, although I, I definitely see value in a lap counter. Uh, on running, what do I use? I use my iPhone. Yeah, the Wahoo right. app, <laughs> lots and lots of miles, and and I use it in my hand. I use uh, I just hold the have a life proof case on it. I used to have with the older ones. I had our case, which I love with a handband. But uh, but yeah, the last last couple of years, it's been just a life proof running with it. So it's funny you mentioned the Wahoo app. For me, the Wahoo app is great because it's got so much kind of data keenness behind the scenes. Like I think if you turn back the clock, however many years ago when you first released it, it, it was almost all about the data. Like there were so many ways to get the data into there and out of there and formats and file formats and all that. Over time, and I, obviously that was a lot of you behind the scenes being that engineer geek, as you try to make it more and more mainstream, how much of a, a tug of war do you have in kind of still keeping a lot of that stuff, but also... Well, it's honestly, I think we've we've still stretched ourselves. Um, you know, we launched RunFit last year as an attempt to get more of a mainstream app, um, and as a result, we've neglected our Wahoo app. Um, and as we go toward these products that are more specific, you know, the Element handles the cycling use case really well. So, you know, we're not we haven't invested in our app for cycling so much. Um, I still think it's an awesome app. I still think we need to, you know, support it and keep working on it. Um, we've done a ton of work. I don't know if any uh, users are on Android. I think our Android app has come a, a long way, and the code base is really good. So, um, yeah, I think we'll we'll continue to innovate there. Okay, cool. Um, so, speaking of apps, you know, you had the uh, Wahoo Segments app a while ago that was released. Uh, that was I think one of your kind of initial demo apps a long time ago for. Uh, being able to ride Strava segments on the trainer and kind of repeat those and potentially upload them, uh, but eventually pulled from the app store. What's the what's kind of the story behind that? That was the same thing. It was resources. So it, we, we are a small team and we just have tried to do too much. And so um, segments was an example. We did, we did one, of, one of the goals there was to, um, to make it a narrow enough use case that we could support it. So all it did was allow you to ride a segment. And compare yourself to other people on the leaderboard so it didn't let you string together multiple se segments or do intervals or any of that stuff and that was that was on purpose but you know the sad truth is every year Apple puts a new iOS release out that causes a ton of work to have to be done just to keep your apps working and uh, and we just had a hard time keeping up with it and so rather than keep something out there that, that kind of didn't meet our standards we decided to pull it um, and you know it may come back someday uh, 
probably in something that works with the element or you know one of our other products. Okay. Cool. So we're about 46 minutes. It looks like folks are still having some some audio and video issues. I think you know do it for tomorrow is to go ahead and probably reduce the stream quality a little bit and find some better Wi-Fi somewhere. Um, but I think I've, we've got most of the questions taken care of here on the list, uh, both ones I had as well as as well as other ones. Um, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss any here at all. So I guess one question, one final question for you: If you were to look at your your competitors in the bike world, um, so Garmin, for example, on on their units, what would be the one feature that you've looked at on their things and said, "Wow, that's really cool. We wish we thought of that first. Um, or whoever it could be Polar or someone else. Someone of your well, top I'll, I'll give you one that's kind of it's 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 a love hate thing. The the new Neo Road Noise, you know, okay. Road Feel. Sure. You know, that's something that with our flywheel we can never do. It's very gimmicky, but yep. I'm sure it helps them sell. But um, but yeah, it was like oh they they pulled one out of their hat. You know, that was a pretty cool thing to throw out there. Ultimately, I don't think people probably will like it on a day-to-day -day use, but yeah, it's going to help them sell product. So that was one that yeah, I wish I wish we could do that. We can't keep that road feel and do that. So uh, you know, we'll have to come up with something else. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to, to chat for a, a while here. Um, remember, folks, if you're uh, watching the stream, we'll be back again tomorrow at 6 o'clock as well with uh, Jim from Quark. So he's a founder of Quark. Uh, kind of had a very a similar story as uh, Chip here, starting off from essentially nothing to building into a much bigger business. Um, hopefully we'll resolve a bunch of the audio and streaming issues by then. Um, so again, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Thanks, guys.